Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be taking a look at why I decided to upgrade to the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D over my 5600X. The 5700X 3D is AMD's cheapest option if you want to get into their 3DV cache technology. This processor is essentially a bent down version of the higher end 5800X 3D with some reduced clock speeds, however it still does maintain that 96 megabytes of L3 cache. For owners of an existing AM4 system, this is probably the best upgrade path if you don't want to shell out hundreds of dollars for a new motherboard, DDR5 RAM, and a 7000 series processor. This is simply an update your BIOS and drop this in, and all of a sudden you can gain up to two times your performance, maybe even more depending on what you came from. Now, I personally came from a 5600X, so the performance difference is significant in some games and in others not so much, but if you're coming from something from the 3000 series or older, this is going to be a huge upgrade. Now, let's check out what this upgrade actually looks like. In Escape from Tarkov, we see quite a big difference, more so in the 1% and 0.1% lows than the average, but even looking at the average, it's still a pretty big improvement. Across the board, there's a solid 20-30% to 30 jump, and the 0.1% low is it's actually two and a half times higher. Now, this is very important in a game like Tarkov because any stutter or jitter during an intense firefight or an intense moment often leads to death uh, simply because things aren't responsive. Uh, but overall, this is actually pretty impressive and this is more to do with the 3D cache than the increase in cores uh, more than anything. So overall, I think it's pretty good. Now for CS2, I actually kind of laughed when I did the math on this one. I didn't think it was possible to have, you know, close to a 400% gain in, in one area, but uh, clearly it is. Uh, but weirdly enough, I didn't really feel this gain a whole lot, and I think it's because of my monitor. I have a 144Hz, so it's not like I'm running at 240 uh, however, 289 FPS to 408 looks like a pretty big gap when you look at the numbers. I mean, it is a 41% gain. However, 289 FPS is still ridiculous and is 100% playable. And if you're running 289 FPS and you claim that the FPS was your problem, uh, I would suggest looking in the mirror. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, this was pretty impressive. And if you really are at that pro level or you're that good, this might make a difference, especially with the 0.1% lows. Uh, I noticed that the smokes in this game are pretty demanding, and that's where I felt it, but it was only for a split second, and I'm nowhere near good enough for this to have any significant impact on my gameplay, so overall, still excellent for both CPUs for that matter. I feel like now might be a good time to go over some of the core specs and differences between these two CPUs, as what we saw previously was a pretty big difference, and looking at this sort of on paper might give us a clue as to why. Uh, so the first thing to look at, which is kind of surprising to most people, and including myself, was the difference in clock speeds. So using PBO for both of them, my 5600X was able to run at 4.85 GHz, but my 5700X 3D was only 4.05 GHz. So that's uh, minus 20% in terms of total clock speed. The core is increased by 33% from 6 to 8, as it would from a Ryzen 5 to Ryzen 7. This is still true for uh, the 7000 and even the newest 9000 series. Uh, but where we see the biggest difference is a 3 times increase in the amount of L3 cache. And this is key to gaming, especially at high FPS. And this is sort of what AMD does. This is their specialty at uh, stacking that cache on top of the processor and essentially uh, just dumping as much as they can into it. This overall results in an increase of 24% to the overall Cinebench score. Um, Cinebench isn't always the best way to look at CPU performance, but it gives a good rough guide, and looking at the increases and decreases uh, from the 5600X to the 5700X 3D, it's, it's clear to see why. It's, it's the cache, undeniably. For Fortnite, it's a pretty similar story to the rest of the games, except for the 0.1% lows. Uh, this game's known for being just a stutter fest. I mean, I don't know how they've designed this thing, or rather not designed this thing. It just doesn't run on any platform that well. It always stutters, as you can see in the recording there. Uh, we do see an 8.5 times increase to the 0.1% lows, and a 75% increase to the average. So overall, this is pretty impressive and results in an actual difference that you can feel. I don't know if it's because it stutters less, uh, well, that's probably the reason why, but overall this is actually really impressive. The 0.1% lows don't see much of an improvement, uh, but it's still an improvement nonetheless, and it makes the game much more playable, I guess, for lack of a better term. 
Next up here is Overwatch, uh, and unfortunately I didn't have this installed when I had the 5600X simply because I didn't have the disk space, but now that I have an extra SSD, I figured this is probably a game that you guys play a lot. I've never touched this, uh, but when I saw the 1% and 0.1% lows, I thought there was something wrong with my monitoring software. I've never seen 0.1% lows that high before. Uh, I redid the benchmark two, three times, and I got the same result, so we have an average FPS of nearly 600, 1% lows of 400, and 0.1% lows of 300, which is absolutely insane. I don't think anybody needs this much FPS, or many FPS, but I mean, for a processor this price, and honestly, I'm, I'm kind of out of, out of words for this one, uh, it just caught me by surprise. Our last and final game for today is going to be Warzone. I figured this is also one that's very popular and that's also very CPU demanding. I'm sure you've noticed all these games have been shooter games and that's partly because these are the kinds of games where you need high FPS. And most people buying an X3D chip are probably going to be playing competitive games like this anyways. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have this installed on the 5600X system either, simply because I didn't have any disk space. Uh, I, I have another 1TB SSD now, so thankfully I can install these things. Um, anyways, the average FPS was 216, with 1% 1 lows of 154. This is really, really impressive, and even the 0.1% lows are high as well, and I was kind of surprised because my 5600X, I remember I played this once on it, and it kind of stuttered a little bit. I, I didn't notice any of that whatsoever. Um, and I realized that this is an online game, so depending on the lobbies that you're in, you might get different FPS, but overall it was really, really stable and, and super enjoyable to play. I felt like I had no disadvantage besides my lack of skill, uh, and this ran perfectly is pretty much all I can say. So the big question is, is it really worth it? And this part of the video isn't scripted, I'm just giving you my opinion off the top of my head. and. Yes, it is. It really is worth it, and it's even better if you can sell your old CPU and recoup some of that cost. So, for example, when I bought my 5600X, it was $200 Canadian, and I managed to sell it for $140 Canadian. And when I bought the 5700X 3D, it cost me $300, so I was able to recoup almost half the cost there, and that's where you see the real benefit. And also with that, I was able to keep my motherboard, my RAM, my cooler, everything. So it was literally just update the BIOS and plop it in, and it worked like a charm. And I noticed the difference right away in pretty much every game that I played. Um, I didn't include every game that I played just because not everybody's going to play those as well. Um, stuff like War Thunder, I find not too many people play that I talk to at least. So I figured I would take that out and put in Warzone instead because I figure that's probably more important. But overall, the CPU's been great. I've had no problems with it. I've been running it for about two and a half, three months now, and it's just been absolutely excellent. And I can't recommend this enough. It draws the same amount of power as the 5600X, so you're not gonna have to beef up your cooler. Yes, a stock cooler might work, but I don't recommend. Just pick up a $40 air cooler. Thank you guys very much for watching the video. Uh, I know my uploads have been kind of inconsistent lately. I've just had a few health issues and I've had to take a break for myself but I'm planning to get back to making videos more often on some graphics cards and other computer components. So if you'd like to see more of that, please subscribe and thank you again for watching.